Welcome to training on the Fuel Link 5, accessing the controller user interface, and how to configure and set up display communication. Let's kick off by showing you the different options for connecting to the user interface. The first option would be the wired network. To connect this way, you will plug a customer provided CAT5 cable into the network jack on the controller. The other option is wired direct. This is where you would plug a customer provided CAT5 cable from a computer to the network jack on the controller. And lastly, we have the wireless or Wi-Fi option. From any Wi-Fi enabled smart device, you can connect to the Wi-Fi access point named FuelLink5, enter in the password, then verify that the connection is successful. You may need to allow it through firewalls if you are using a laptop. Once connected to the controller using one of the methods mentioned, you can then open the web browser and navigate to http semicolon slash slash fuellink5 or http semicolon slash slash fuellink5 dot local. Make note to go to configuration and then device to change the Wi-Fi access point default password. If connecting to customer Wi-Fi, after connecting to the Wi-Fi access point, as described, you will want to go to Configuration, Wi-Fi, and click Scan Wi-Fi Networks. Select the best desired network from the drop-down list, enter in the password, and then click Save Wi-Fi Configuration and Connect. Disconnect the device from the FuelLink 5 access point, and then verify the customer's device can access HTTP semicolon slash slash fuel link 5 over their chosen Wi Fi network. Once in the user interface, you can now configure the radios. One at a time, plug each radio into the fuel link 5 controller at the RS485 jack. In the software user interface, navigate to configuration, device, and then click configure radio. Assign the following settings to each radio. The network ID, select any number in this range. All radios at site must have the same network ID. The channel is next. All clients must have the same channel as the server controlling them. You can go 0 to 9. The radio name is optional, but has a 20 character max. Make note that multi-server systems must use different network IDs and or channel numbers to prevent the servers from interfering with each other. Once you have set the network and the channel, click Save to finish the configuration. Now that the radios are configured, you're able to detect displays. Make note that only display modules with firmware version 2.12 and higher are supported with the display detection process. Before moving forward, refer to module firmware update to verify module firmware and update as needed and then continue to the next steps. To detect the displays, you will go to Configuration and Detect, and click Detect System. After modules are detected, enter the number of total displays. Look at the displays and write down the highest number shown on each display. This will be either the top right or bottom right module. Enter this number in the last address field of each display. Click Save when finished to save the system to the controller and display memory. Make note that each pylon shows the correct number of displays and number of modules within each display. Next up is configuring displays. Go to Configuration, Display, and set the following for site-specific setup. You will want to set the dimming to automatic or manual. The number of frames, if multiple frames are required for use with cache credit displays, select the number of frames up to 4 and select the hold time in seconds to each display each frame. The hold times in seconds. The font, you are able to select from one of five font styles. Make note that prices $10 and higher are not affected by the selected font. The format. You can select from one of four fraction types. And make note 
Do not reset the network without being instructed by Dactronic. Now we can test communication. To do this, go to Configuration and Detect and click Refresh. Verify the server and client radios are shown properly. Go to the system menu to view the radio signal strength. A value lower, more negative than minus 85 may indicate higher signal loss and difficulty in sending information to and from the client radio. If this is the case, reposition the server and or client radios to get more height and avoid obstructions between them. Once the signal strength is acceptable, you can then permanently mount the radio. Now you are able to configure products and prices. Perform these steps to assign a product name or field type or grade for each price shown. Go to Configuration, Product Names. For the POS type or point of sale type, select Manual if there is no point of sale system, otherwise select the correct point of sale protocol. Make note that additional parameters must be configured per the selected point of sale interface. Refer to Install and Test point of sale interface. Then enter in the product name. Enter a descriptive name for each product. For example, unleaded, diesel, cash, diesel credit, etc. Once finished, click Save Configuration. You can then go to the Prices menu to manually set the prices. Click in the Price field to enter a specific value or use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the price in one cent increment. Once getting to the correct price, click Save. If possible, go look at the display to verify the prices were correctly updated. Make note to override prices received from a point of sale system, you will need to click Override for manual price adjustment.